Here we are. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Piazza San Marco and the Basilica of St. Mark here in the city of Venice. Uh, I'm Sarah Murdoch of Adventures with Sarah. I've been a tour guide for about 20 years and we're here today to look at the fabulous mosaics of the Basilica. So if you have a look, starting with the floor, you can see all of these beautiful colors and what we're going to see today is a mixture of stones like this. This is marble, different kinds of marble coming from the ancient world. What you have to know is that St. Mark's was constructed by uh, Venetians who were connected to Byzantium. Now the thing about it is that in Byzantium, that was the extension of the Roman Empire, the late Roman Empire. So the Venetians traded a lot with them and eventually in the 1200s sacked the city and took a lot of the beautiful uh, stone, brought it to Venice and built a basilica. So the exterior has columns from all over the Roman world and the interior has lots of remnants also from the ancient world. This church was started in the 800s AD, finished around the year 1000, more or less, a little bit later, uh, but easy to remember that, and it burned down in between. Now, one of the great stories of this church is that the, the St. Mark the Evangelist was not the, from here. He was actually taken by Venetian traders from Alexandria and Egypt and put in here in the 800s. Then, of course, the church burned down and the famous story is that when it was consecrated for a second time in the year 1000s, uh, on the consecration, the whole body of St. Mark fell out of one of the columns in the church. So we do have the body of Mark the Evangelist here in the church. But what's most extraordinary about this church is the uh, mosaics. So we're going to take a walk around and have a look at the mosaics right now. So follow me. So the style of mosaics we have here are called Byzantine mosaics, and that's because this was a style developed in Byzantium. Now it's actually a Roman style, because this style of mosaic even started as early as Rome in, let's say, 400 BC coming from Greece. So the Greeks originally invented this sort of creating of uh, mosaics with stone, evolved over the Roman Empire into beautiful places such as the Villa del Casale in uh, Sicily. And then eventually uh, that all the artists that did that kind of artwork in ancient Rome moved to Constantinople. The artwork evolved and it turned into what we call Byzantine mosaics today. Come closer to me. So what we're going to be looking at is an art style that is specific to Byzantium. And what it's made of, when you look at these stones in all these beautiful mosaics, it's a stones and gold. So the, the, up there, you can see uh, that the mosaics, these little tiny tests today are about the size of my fingernail. This fingernail here is about the size of each of those tiny little tiles up there. They're called tests today. And what it is, is glass that has gold leaf in, inside of it. And then you have another layer of glass on top and it's baked all together, cut into little tiny pieces and made into works of art that last for a thousand years. Now this was mosaic over many, many years. We have even mosaics from the 1500s, so it's not all from the same time period. But these mosaics represent one of the most beautiful works of art from what we think of as the Middle Ages. Now, of course, everybody calls that the Dark Ages, right? We can see by looking at these beautiful mosaics, the Dark Ages never actually existed, that it was just a different style. So I'm gonna take you around and just do a little commentary as we walk and show you some of the beautiful works here. So on the lower walls, we have different kinds of marbles, again, stolen essentially from Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade in the 1200s, and brought here and put on the walls as sort of a show of how important this city was becoming. Venice in the 1200s was becoming one of the most important cities in the world, one of the richest, and this was their way of showing their financial might. Let's have a, a look at some of these up here. What's very interesting about these Byzantine mosaics is if you look at Roman painting or uh, Roman mosaic, the, the facial style is very similar. It comes from that school, but it's very flat. It's kind of two-dimensional. But look at the beautiful clothing. Look at how well described all of this is. So people who were mosaic makers, they did what they knew, which is 
they drew people the way they saw them. So when you see people in these elegant costumes like this, what you're looking at is the way a Byzantine priest would have looked. So th this is somebody who would have been a Byzantine nobleman, the way they dressed with a heavy uh, jewel-colored cloth, wool cloth, that would have been typical of that time. So what makes this church unique in Italy is it's one of the oldest uh, that is not Roman. So we, we don't think of this is not a Roman church. It was not built by the Romans. It was built by the Venetians using Byzantine craftsmen. And so what we're really looking at is something that comes from a time period when there's not a lot of other architecture being built. And that's why when you look at these low domes with those tiny little windows, it's something that seems Eastern. And that's because it's a style that developed in Constantinople in the east. You don't see a lot of other churches from this time period and therefore you don't see this interesting style anywhere else. So you look at you have a dome here and then you have four domes surrounding it. All, four all together, three surrounding the, the one central one. So it's just a very interesting thing because this is not at all a style that you see in Western Europe very often. Now up above, these, are, these domes are actually fairly flat, but up above there are false domes built. But that's because there's been church on the outside. So as we walk along, you can see how beautiful these floors are. This was a very typical technique back uh, in the Middle Ages. What they would do is pull the marble off of Roman monuments so this might have come from North Africa, the Greece, who knows where. But when they would pull the marble off of uh, Roman monuments, it would shatter. And what do you do when you have a shattered sheet of marble? Well, you take it and you make a patchwork. So this was essentially like a patchwork quilt. It was exactly the same idea. It's reutilizing pieces of marble that would have been uh, lost otherwise. This porphyry, this is a red granite that originates from Egypt. This was very special. It was usually only used for Roman emperors. So when we see that, we know that this was taken from a Roman monument, for sure. Here's the scene with uh, the apostles. And of course, we have Christ in the very back. Now that is an image of uh, Christ Pantocrator, and that's what gets interesting about churches like this. We have a mixture of imagery from the Western church and the Orthodox church. That's not typically how we see Christ in a Western church. Usually we see Christ on a cross suffering, whereas the Eastern church represents him uh, sitting in the church and he is uh, peaceful and he's considered the, the God of all, Pantocrator. So it's an interesting difference in iconography. So here we can also see a difference in the newer versus the older um, mosaics. All of these mosaics here were done at a much later time a project by Tufum, and so that means 1500s. These ones here are going to be 1100s. You can see immediately, just descriptively, it's a totally different style. And see the map? Well, this looks like a painting. Byzantine mosaics when we get to the ones that are over the My eye, personally, I prefer the Byzantine style because they're almost So a lot of times we just have to read things by the symbols, by the colors. It, it is, it's like, a, once you understand what the different symbols mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to come and see these because they have different, uh, very much a comic book quality to them. St. Mark's Basilica is one of the best examples of Byzantine mosaics that we can find outside of Ravenna because uh, Venice was uh, associated with Constantinople, but Ravenna was actually the Byzantine home base. So tomorrow we're going to go to Ravenna and visit there. Would you like to talk about a conic plasm? We will talk about a conic plasm when we get to uh, Ravenna. church. It costs uh, three euros to enter the church. Uh, you can get a reservation ahead of time if you wish to skip the line. Otherwise, we just waited in the line. 
you can also come to Mass here. They do have Mass um, once a day. And I believe it's around 5 o'clock. You have to check the schedule. Uh, you can't walk around, but you can certainly enjoy the space in the way that it was meant to be seen. And they turn all the lights on. So it's a little dark today, but they don't have the lights on. So Byzantine mosaics are a fascinating thing to learn about, and I hope to bring you more videos explaining their origins and their meanings. Uh, this is just an introduction. The reason I find them so fascinating is that they were a, a style of art done at a time when we've been told it was the Dark Ages, when nothing good was happening. But that's not true. It's because art moved and followed the money, which it is in Byzantium. That's where the money was. So that's why it's interesting and important to study this so we understand the larger picture of history, not just in Europe, but also history in the East. And besides that, they're really beautiful. So let's continue to learn about Byzantine mosaics. We'll have more for you uh, tomorrow coming live to you from Ravenna. So from St. Mark's Basilica, I'm Sarah Murdoch with Adventures with Sarah, and I encourage you to keep traveling and keep exploring. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.